Hello my friends, you're listening to eBird Online and I'm back with yet another review. Yes, that's right, it's 90 Day Fiancé The Other Way, Season 4. And today we're going to be talking about Gabrielle from Florida and Isabel from Colombia. So guys, it's kind of like a new era for 90 Day Fiancé. It's our very first trans couple. But luckily it's going to be really subtle and tastefully done. We're not going to know much about it. (laughs) Cue fake penis making and one man pride having Gabrielle. Oh, very quickly before I forget, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. I genuinely appreciate it. But if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe you want to consider it. Just press the big red button, mark subscribe, and make eBird a very happy eBird. Also, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to smash the like button. It really does help with my algorithm. Thanks, guys. Right, so without further ado, I give you Gabrielle and Isabel. First up, guys, meet Gabrielle. I'm trans. Once upon a time, I was a girl, and now I'm a whole man. A whole man, because I already got my surgery. So, like I say, subtle as ever. TLC make a decision. For our first introduction to Gabriel, to be watching him make fake penises. So he pours some sort of latex into a mould, waits for it to go hard. Oh lord, the jokes just write themselves. And then he places it inside underwear. And this basically creates a fake bulge for female to male trans people who have yet to have the op. Now guys, I don't mind telling you, when I first heard about this business I thought, I can't imagine he makes too much money from it. But then I got to thinking, well... I guess you would need one for every single pair of underwear. So I guess each person would need about 15 or 20 of them. And also, maybe not many other people are doing it. So you can charge the absolute earth. And of course, they decided to do what I do best. And I had a little research. Oh, my friends, guess what I found? And guys, I'm going to do a little pause here because I just want to let you know this is probably not safe for work. But look, 4.7 inches. 335 pounds 5.3 inches 424 pounds 7.5 inches 509 pound 23 i think it's fair to suggest that gabriel's in the wrong business what he's selling is about i don't know 20 25 dollars get out of that and get into this and so gabriel lets us know that whilst he was searching for a supplier in colombia to sew the prosthetics in his underpants He met Isabel, the love of his life. And guys, I've got to admit, this couple is quite cute. They do seem to get on really well. And so apparently Isabel's got a couple of kids. And the whole family, including Isabel's parents, all think Gabrielle's the second coming and they get on with him really well. And so apparently the very first night they met, they went out clubbing. And luckily for Gabrielle, Isabel said, I don't have sex on the first night. And Gabrielle lets us know he'd yet to tell her that he was trans. And so next time we catch up with Gabrielle, he's having what he calls a one-man gay pride flush parade. Oh my god, guys. He stripped off to his underpants. He had a sign which, well, pretty much looked like it had been made by a, a kindergarten kid. And he strolled up and down the street, in the middle of the road, stopping traffic as he went. And so Gabriel explains to us that he started the flash pride parade during Covid, during lockdown, when obviously Pride was cancelled, and he treats it as a pick-me-up. He enjoys it, and he makes him feel good about himself. And so Gabriel tells us a bit about his background and his childhood, and he said he knew he was different right from kindergarten, and he used to dress up in boys' clothes. And then when he was 16, he came out as a lesbian, because he didn't understand what it was at that point to be trans, or that you could change gender, or that you could have your gender reassigned. And so then he said when he was about 22, he watched a YouTube video, And it was a guy transitioning and he knew immediately he had to do it and he set about his journey and then gabriel talks about i don't know the concerns about when you tell somebody that you're trans and he made a decision to tell isabel the morning after they went clubbing and she said i don't mind i see you as a guy anyway and that was pretty much that and so then a couple of months after they met gabriel went over to colombia and rented an apartment and isabel and her kids moved in with him and then he lets us know he's planning to ask her to marry him And so next time we see Gabriel, he's meeting up with his friend, Keanu, who's also trans. And they talk about Gabriel's impending permanent move to Colombia. And so his friend asks him if it's trans-friendly over there. Which to me is an interesting question. Is it trans-friendly anywhere? Maybe some places, but well, I don't know. And then Gabriel drops the bomb. He lets his friend know 
that Isabel's parents have no idea whatsoever that he's trans. He says he gets on really well with them, they've welcomed him into the family, and every time he sees them, he feels as if he's keeping something from them. He asks his friend for advice on how to tell them. He's planning to ask Isabel's dad for her hand in marriage, and he wants to know if he should tell them that he's trans before, after, or at the same time. Do I tell him I'm trans first, or do I ask him to marry his daughter? So the point of you asking for his permission, let him know he accepts you as a whole. So let him know, listen, before I'm gonna let you know about after. me. No, let him know before. He's giving you his blessings to marry his child. So let him know, listen, this is what I got going on with me. You know what I'm saying? I want you to still accept me as who I am. So it's gonna be like in one conversation? Yes, like, of course, of course. Um, yeah, guys, I'm not so sure I think it's a good idea to tell them everything in one go. But this guy's saying with his whole chest, yes, of course, tell them at the same time. Obviously, every situation is different, but I'm not sure why he's so vociferously saying, yes, of course, of course. Not necessarily, of course, but I'm going to discuss it a bit more, I think, at the end of the video. And so next time we meet up with Gabe, he's sitting in a tattoo parlour and he's going to get Isabel tattooed on his arm. He helpfully lets us know that the tattoo is completely permanent and it shows Isabel that he's here to stay. <laughs> Nothing gives tattoo cover up or tattoo removal like a current girlfriend or boyfriend's name. There's a whole industry based around the fact that tattoos are no longer permanent. And then out of nowhere up pops his sister Monica and it turns out that Monica is dating his tattooist. She stands slightly disapproving with her hands on her hips and Gabe explains to us that he and Monica often don't get on and they bump heads. But he does say the two are close and then Monica said, oh, are you going to black out the other girlfriend's name? <laughs> There's nothing like a bait sister. What did I tell you? How are tattoos permanent? People, use your brain. So he has another tattoo which he has to black out. Oh Lord. Okay, so you're getting this new tattoo, is that like to prove that you love her just as much as you used to love the person on the back of your neck or what? I just, I don't know. I just want her name. It's like another notch on the belt, right? <laughs> it's how I express myself. It would very much seem as if the sister has as little faith in tattoos being this permanent declaration of love as the e-bird does. And honestly, I love that sneak diss. Here's the new tattoo just to prove that you love the girl as much as the girl from the old tattoo. <laughs> I'm liking this sister, I really am. And then his sister paints quite an interesting picture of Gabe. She said you fall in love after a week, you get their name tattooed on your body, you move them in with you. And then it all crumbles to pieces. Guys, let's hope this time it's different. And then his sister said, what about her kids? You said you'd never date somebody with kids again, Gabe. And he said it's different this time because the kids are older, 11 and 16. Oh, that's fine. They won't need anything from you then. <laughs> it's very probably going to be worse. But he said she's a really good mum and takes care of her kids and he feels part of a, a proper real family. And his sister said, well, you have a tendency to jump in too quickly and then you find out they're another crazy girlfriend. How do you know the same's not going to happen? And he said, I feel it in my bones. It's different this time. I think she's the one. But if it doesn't work out, I'll be back here and you can tell me I told you so. And that's where we leave things for this week. So what does the eBird make of all of this? Well, there are two major things that pop out to me. Firstly, it's somewhat of a worry that he seems to hop from relationship to relationship. But then I guess on the other hand, what does anybody do until they meet the one and get married and settle down? I guess that's kind of the story of dating, I guess. I think the only thing probably that he does that's wrong is that he moves in with the person. It sounds like rather quickly, but having said that, in this situation, I think it kind of makes sense. He's known her for a year already, but how will he get to know her properly? Unless he lives with her full time and they're in real life mode and, and not holiday mode. I think a year's a decent enough time to be together before moving in. But the second thing, well, this is the most important thing to me. Her parents don't know he's trans. So I guess he has three main choices. Either one, never to tell them. Two, to tell them at some other unspecified date in the future, i.e. five years time when it's too late, or three to tell them as he asks for her hand in marriage and before any wedding. 
With number one, if he decides never to tell them, that could lead to problems because obviously the whole of his family know. And so I feel like at some point, it's just going to come out. But on the other hand, I guess he could say, well, it's my personal business. It's no business of anyone else's other than me and my partner. The second option is to tell them far, far into the future. And that's probably what the eBird would do. <laughs> For she's chicken shit. But again, this could lead to problems. Because I guess when they finally do find out, they're going to be absolutely fuming you didn't tell them before. But then again, when it finally does come out, they're going to give the old classic, if only you'd told us, we'd be okay. No, more than likely if I'd have told you, I'd just be hearing the horse shit I'm hearing now, months or even years ago. <laughs> Guys, you know it. If you tell them, you risk them rejecting you and trying to split the relationship up. And if you don't tell them, there's a massive secret hanging over you and you do give them a stick with which to beat you. But if he decides on option number three, tells the parents at the same time that he asks for her hand in marriage, then I guess they could say no. And if she's as close to her parents as he thinks she is, they could scupper the whole thing. So I guess if you just leave it, Isabel will be hopefully in too deep and it will be too much of a real relationship to be split apart by her parents. Hmm, it really is quite the quandary. I think the truth be told, I would just leave it and just never tell them. But guys, I would absolutely love to know what you would do. Would you do one, two or three? Or have you got another, probably better idea of when and how and if you should tell them? Please let me know in comments down below. I'm very interested to see what you've got to say. Also, anyone that's had this specific experience, I would love to hear from you as well. And I'm going to get on with my next video. Guys, thank you, thank you so much for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Help your girl out, smash that big red button, and I'll see you very soon. You've been listening to eBird Online, and I bid you good day. Baby, you give me ice and fire. You're giving me wind and rain. You're some kind of butterfly. Bye-bye.